Ladies and gentlemen, the great electrifier. Energy is indestructible. It's an endless stream forever flowing that doesn't cease to exist, but like matter itself, only changes forms. Energy exists in two fundamental ways. It either flows freely or it's shored up. When we shore up energy, we create a method by which to harness it. All energy shores have a negative side. This is true of wood, wind, solar, hydro, hydrocarbons, nuclear, or anything else. And yet virtually all scientists agree that the discovery of energy at the nucleus of the atom is the greatest scientific feat of the 20th century. Chemical energy, which is everything from wood to crude oil to gasoline to coal, consists of playing with the electrons, changing their energy state. With nuclear energy, however, the colossal discovery was that there's far more energy in the nucleus of the atom. Specifically, scientists discovered that the concentration of energy in the nucleus of the atom is two million times as great as the energy in the shell of an atom. This is why nuclear energy produces no carbon emissions and, despite what you've been told, is clean and has few side effects. All this talk, therefore, about needing to, quote, discover a new form of energy, unquote, misses the point entirely. We've already done so. It's called nuclear energy, and it's phenomenal. Did you know that a handful of uranium contains more energy than 100 boxcars full of coal? There are tiny amounts of uranium residue in coal. Those trace residuals have more energy potential than all the boxcars of coal itself. The meltdown of the uranium core in 1979 at Three Mile Island was so overblown by anti-nuclear groups that it went virtually unnoticed that the containment vessel at Three Mile Island had done its job. It prevented any significant release of radioactivity. Same with Fukushima, no matter what the reams of anti-nuke propaganda tell you. To this day, the facts remain. Total number killed by nuclear radiation at Fukushima, zero. Total number injured by radiation, zero. Total private property damage because of radiation, zero. Yes, quoting nuclear physicist Kelvin Kem, there was no nuclear disaster. What there was was a major media feeding frenzy fueled by the remote possibility that there may have been a huge radiation leak. Close quote. Chernobyl was an unmitigated catastrophe, and it happened under some of the biggest, heaviest government control and regulation the world has ever seen. Why did it happen? Because that state-run reactor was astonishingly unsafe. In the words of one Russian physicist, quote, you couldn't have operated a toaster oven out of it. Close quote. There is, in fact, really no such thing as nuclear waste. A nuclear reactor is refueled by its waste. In other words, almost all, quote, waste, unquote, can be recycled. Indeed, 95% of a spent nuclear fuel rod is natural uranium, and so it can be put right back in the ground, just as it was found. The radioactive part constitutes only about 5%, but of that, half is uranium and plutonium, and so it too can be recycled as fuel, specifically mixed oxide fuel which is exactly what the French have been doing for 25 years now. After 25 years, the French store all their so-called waste in one room under La Hague, which is about the size of a basketball gymnasium. And do you know who else has been safely using nuclear energy for 50 years without incident? The United States Navy. Why haven't you heard any of this? Because a writer for the New Yorker magazine named John McPhee in 1974 published a highly influential book called The Curve of Blinding Energy, which convinced President Jimmy Carter and many others that people could steal used plutonium from nuclear plants and make bombs with it. But this is absolutely untrue. Nevertheless, based solely on this detrimental misinformation, our country now has 50,000 tons of nuclear waste, quote-unquote, because our government won't allow nuclear plants 
to reuse and recycle it. And I still hear him call my name. Hey.